BMI versus abdominal CT, computerized tomography. abdominal CT won out. It's no big surprise. We've known for a long time that BMI has a lot of problems. So why do I still use it? Well, I've actually never really asked a patient to what their RFM was, relative fat mass. That's a formula that was supposed to be simple, but it's not, and it's not going to replace BMI. What I do wish though, what I'd love to see is something more accurate than BMI out there. We have ways to do it. We have abdominal CT now. We've had DEXA scan and we've had RFM for a while, which was developed out of DEXA scan. Now, why is BMI a problem? Well, this was an image of Arnold Schwarzenegger at about the time that he won Mr. Olympia. We'll talk about it in a few minutes, but, and we'll show a different image. But he was obese, according to the BMI. Now, he did have a lot of weight on his body, but it was muscle weight. It wasn't fat weight. And fat weight makes a difference. Fat is not inert tissue. It is endocrine tissue that creates a lot of bad things, most specifically insulin resistance, prediabetes, and even diabetes. So let's talk about the study just a second. They did single slice CT at the third lumbar vertebra, for those of you who care, and it beat BMI, not a hard thing to do, as a predictor of cardiovascular risk. It was reported December 2nd at the Radiological Society of North America. The study was done using CTs from 2012 at Harvard. Who did it? Kirta Magudia. She's an MD, PhD. She's faculty now at UCSF, and I believe she was a resident at Harvard when she did the study. 33,182 abdominal CT scans. 50% women. So it was a great mix. It wasn't just men and looking at men in a large gut. It was a lot of people and a good mix. Five-year follow-up, there were 1,560 heart attacks, 938 strokes. And so here's how they do this. And it gives you a little bit of perspective on what AI is. They got all of these studies, they got all of the outcomes, and then they let the machine go back and start using the outcomes to measure what sort of things matter, and then go back and test that against prediction. So what's another way of looking at that? What we've had in, up until the AI age, the artificial intelligence, age is that we've had what we call expert rules system or expert logic systems. You get a bunch of experts, you set them around the table and they argue out, do their politics or whatever. They come to some sort of a consensus or agreement on the rules that or logic that will populate the software. Well, with AI, you have something slightly different. That's the starting point, but it's really only the environment. Those expert rules or logic create the environment or the playground for the computer. The computer then goes in and starts looking at tens and hundreds of thousands of examples to check that to see exactly which of these rules work and which ones don't, and are there things that the experts never picked up. So is it working in medicine? It's already working in medicine, actual health care as opposed to side parts of medicine. Harvard reported on some improvement in medical records with it. I've done several reports on things like making a diagnosis. I work with a company called K-Health. They use true AI for helping docs make a better, quicker, more effective diagnosis. And again, it works. So how about BMI? Does it work? It's not a great predictor, but again, why do I use it? Because the other predictors just aren't gaining ground. We've had DEXA scans, which are better. We've had RFM, relative fat mass, which was relatively simple formula, but maybe not simple enough to unseat BMI. And now we've got abdominal single slice CT. We've got a bunch of different better ways to do this, but BMI is still hanging in there. I had four conversations with four patients yesterday and we talked about BMI. So thanks for listening to my rant. So I'd like to talk with you a minute about the webinar. People don't understand what the webinar is. It's actually a great way to get some access to healthcare that you're just not going to get any other way. You actually get the lab tests yourself for at a local lab, a Quest lab near you, for the inflammation panel and the OGTT and the insulin survey. These are things, inflammation and prediabetes, that your doctor just does not know about. 
And here's the thing. Harvard Health and many others have said, look, sudden death is not always so sudden. The Hollywood picture that it's a bolt out of the blue is not realistic. It's more like real lightning preceded by clouds, wind, and rain. Stop that metabolic storm before the lightning strikes. And here's where that metabolic storm comes from. It's inflammation, and it has to do usually with prediabetes. So again, we actually get labs. We go over them in the webinar, and then you can start finding out how you can prevent that heart attack. Others said that you couldn't even predict. We can show you how. Thanks.